Joining me now is Princess Fola Shadik Bolaoba. She is the Global President, Yoruba Council of Women Worldwide, and the founder, Shelter of Grace Foundation. Also in the studio is a Cognitive Behavior Counselor, Wemimo Adebi. Good morning, ladies. Thank Good you for morning. joining us Good on morning. TV Good Breakfast. Morning. Right. Now, the issue I'd like for us to focus on are the issues that this case has raised talk about parenting, talk about the abuse of drugs, talk about so many issues, raising children, ensuring that uh, they have a relationship with parents, and every other thing uh, that surrounds this case, but not the case itself, because it's still being investigated. So, But I will begin with you, uh, Wemimo, because you made a post which caught my attention, and I want some level of clarity. This is kind of your field. You relate with teenagers, and you know a lot of things. Yeah. And you said that parents should talk about campus aristos yeah. with their teenage girls. And yeah. I'm wondering, talk about it in what ways, how, and is that in itself enough to addressing this kind of issue? Well, thank you very much. I, I'll start by saying that um, um, we, we, you know, um, when you talk about children, young teenagers yeah. who are entering into the tertiary institution, they enter in by, you know, by intelligence, right. but they are not um, intelligent enough to know the realities in town, because um, we're having children as it were, entering into the university or let's say tertiary institution at about, um, let's say, 17, 18. And between the ages of um, um, five to that, uh, you know, bracket, I'm sure they, were, they must have been secluded away from the realities. Mm. So when they get into that environment, it's like freedom. And they want to explore everything and anything, time to, you know, uh, make friends, time, time to try hands on things I've been held back from. So when a parent knows that I'm going to set a goal for my child to get into the university or tertiary environment early, then it, the onus lies on the parent to teach the child early as in present to them you're not just in this environment to learn there are other vices and you're going to meet some other children like you who will tell you aristo is a way of life is an extracurricular activities that makes you feel like one of us mm. so it's a form of um, fortifying your child against the vices in town because you are not going to be there by the time the child is 16 17 your involvement will become reduced and it is whatever you put into that child within those ages that would now show years. up mm. you know so but we discovered that a lot of children especially girls are not prepared they are not prepared for it so they dance to it and then go for they it they feel it is a norm yeah it's a because norm because it seems the society has embraced it exactly as a norm. and they don't present it to them like it's something they just call it as we're catching fun Right. Yeah, it's fun, it's life, you know, and that's how they roll into it. But let's start from experience again, because <laughs> as a mother of six boys, <laughs> I, I, it came to me as a shock. And <laughs> one uh, girl, I wonder how it was bringing them up despite this pressure, societal pressure, how you were able to manage it. Was it just speaking to them about these vices? Is that enough? <sighs> well, mm. I think uh, parenting to me is one of the most important, the greatest ministry. And if you raise your children to let them know that you have this unconditional love and the support from when they're little, um, the bond, it's something that will keep them over the years. I talk about the three stages. Right. Uh, when they're young, they're totally dependent on you. At some point, uh, they're on their own, you're also on, the, on your own. And then later in life, you are going to be somehow totally dependent on them mm -hmm. to some extent as well. So you must raise them, prepare them for the journey ahead. You know, let them know that life is life. There are choices and there are consequences to choices. Mm -hmm. And then when you also, the discipline, the, the discipline is like even God has the rules and things that you have to go 
by. And so, yes, mom can yell, mom can sometimes, you know, charge, but it is that mom loves you and wants the best from you. And if you, from that early stage, let them understand that everything you do, it's really because of them. It's all about them. It would be less chaotic, let me use that word, mm. them growing up. Okay. And that trust, even when they now grow in the, in the institutions and all that, they will be able to quickly get back and be like, Mom, uh, can we talk, you know, as their trusted friend or whatever, and you let them, you know, through all the, I've been there, um, no, 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 you don't have to do this, yes, you can do this, you know. But I guess these days there's a lot of pressure, um, the financials, you, 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 don't, you don't really spend much time mm. being around them. You know, um, when mine were a lot younger, even going to work, I would have to put them in the car with me, use one hand, baby feed, you know, drop really? them off. Go, oh, yeah. Oh, I told you, just told you, I did all the runs. <laughs> yeah. But so you were really involved. <laughs> yes, yes, you have to be. And, and, and also raising them to also look out for one another. Because, yes, I go to work, the dad is at work, and then the homework sometimes, maybe the elderly ones helps the younger ones, you know. So it's really communal setting in the house, and everybody is interdependent. And so you are quickly to pick the lows. Uh, maybe in school, somebody got bullied, maybe this, you know. Sometimes they might not tell you, they might tell their brother, right. you know, and quickly you, I mean, I had that situation with my daughter and I think it, it really saved the day, mm. you know, where she was scared to go to school, some guy was, you know, and it, it turned out that some story around it later, I'm glad I went to the boy's house and be like, please, that's the only daughter I have, mm. don't mess with <laughs> <laughs> very, very importantly, but for, there are some people who do not have if I may use the word, luxury of having siblings. Yes, yes. 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 So they, they are basically dependent on their parents. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, in this situation, we do not know if she has siblings, but we are told that her parents were separated before her mm -hmm. dad died. Mm -hmm. And then she adopted the person she's staying with now as her father. As her father, yes. And the mother came out to say that I haven't seen her in 10, ten years. years. So it shows perhaps something was wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically. Uh, but then, is that enough to drive this kind of attitude in a young, in a, in a young girl? Yes. I'm going to say, you see, in our field, there's something we called adverse childhood experiences. Mm. And um, these are usually, put, you know, traumatic events. And when we talk about trauma, talking about trauma with a child, mm. you know, um, there are three different stages of trauma. Right. The initial, which just happens without the knowledge of the child, and then the perpetual, and then which now, you know, moves into the major trauma that affects the individual psychologically. Now for her, you know, trauma usually happens in major, you know, adverse trauma could be neglect, you know, abuse, sexual abuse, or even, you know, separation, divorce. Mm. And if you check her history, she, you know, she has been traumatized with time growing up and usually the adverse effect of this trauma is what we're seeing in her behavior mm. it's not about the fact that she went into smoking she was drinking she went into wildlife mm. or maybe she had all manners of stories behind it the root cause of this is actually an adverse trauma really? traumatic experiences she's had with time and then when you look at her psychologically from afar, you would see that she's a withdrawn individual. Mm. She's actually quiet within herself. So she's locked up a lot in her life, uh, you know, in her mind, and she has decided to take hold of her life without getting the right help. Now, every individual would have to go through one Put, you know, traumatic experience or another. But if you do not expose yourself to being helped, then there's every likelihood the impact will be more psychological. How about those who do not know they need help? Yeah, you know, um, there are all manner of... At what point, <laughs> again, at what point do you have to realize that I actually need help? 
you know wh when we talk about trauma it mm. presents itself in different form it could be physical right okay and it could be psychological but the truth is people do not pay attention to the psychological aspect but it plays out behaviorally you know because that's when um, depression sets in that's when um, sort of um, self-worth the person would not have a hold of worth on him or herself and think I need to depend on something I need mm. to depend on a way of life I need to come up with something to show I am worth someone just to cover up the cloudy experience that she or he may have ex you know had in life so that's what we're saying that um, there are all manners of behavioral ways to identify this you see people you know drugs hmm. it's a way to cover up really yeah you know when they go into aristo it's a way to cover up and when they eventually get into having to take another person's life it didn't start with that person it started from a childhood experience hmm. there's a lot Mm -hmm. a, lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to swallow and um, with all of this that she has mentioned how can we begin to perhaps rethink parenting mm -hmm. with all of the pressures that we have seen with all of the trauma uh, some parents may not even know that their children are even being traumatized mm -hmm. by certain things going on in the mm -hmm. home so how can parents begin to ensure they build trust with their children and not fear because growing up for some of us it was more of fear and then in the process we were able to develop trust because we began to see life as it is so that kind of guided us to an extent well um well uh, the topic actually just really grieves my heart mm. but um no excuses honestly mm. Um, I grew up, my father also, very, very tough, okay? So the fear you're talking about, it's like, after God, my father, father. was the next God. You okay? must always fall in love. Yes, line. always. And, and, but you know, over the years, um, I thank God for my father. Because that fear, the discipline and all that, that he helped instill in me, is still what I got to today. That, you know, yes, I was a girl, little girl growing up, you know, he wanted a boy. He raised me as a boy, mm. prepared me for the hard road I had. Mm. And so, uh, yes, initially was meant to be negative, but it turned around to be positive for me because whatever it is today, my father was harder than that. Mm. Yes. And he's like, you know, you will survive. My good name, whatever it is, you must hold up, you must hold for it. And so that's what I'm talking about, consequences. Mm -hmm. The choices. Yes, I went through the schools, and, you know, there were also always children that maybe their, ch their fathers or their mothers were more privileged. Mm. But there was no attraction that would make me derail. Mm. Because I know I will get it when I get back to the house. Oh, yes. And sometimes my mom had that check thing. Look into my eyes. You can't lie. <laughs> and even if other people were there, I'd be like, Mom, okay, tell them to go out. We can't talk. And I can never lie to my mother. And she'd be like, yeah, that's it. No matter how bad it is, you must trust me enough that I've got your back. Mm -hmm. And no matter how it is, we will fix it. Nothing that is not so. I am a very positive person. No situation is not redeemable. Right. Yeah. And you must let them understand that that it is not about where you are coming from. It's about where you're going to. Mm -hmm. And as long as you believe in that, you being a better you every day. Trust me. I'm here to help you. I have no other job as a parent. Mm -hmm. This is my primary job. So help me help you. So most um, children these days, you know, don't have that trust. You know, the, the breakdown, there's, there's, a, there's a, I was talking about us missing it, the, the value, value system. Yes. You know, we drop the balls along the line. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, 
maybe the exposure to so much civilization and internet and all that, whatever. But those things are meant to be our greatest assets to rule our world. It should not be the, the other, other way around. around. Yes. Mm. Mm. And, and, and that brings me to the other issue of helping teenagers manage peer pressure. Yeah. Because we we see it everywhere. They see their their colleagues uh, also, you know, using different gadgets that it seems okay. I'm not privileged to use. Okay, show me the way now. So <laughs> hot soap for me and all of those things that mm -hmm. we keep hearing. Uh, we see uh, people, young people, engage in the use or abuse of drugs. Mm -hmm. And you see persons or their colleagues, their friends, filming them to mm -hmm. see reaction. And I wonder how that brings joy mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. seeing your fellow person manifesting in different kind of way because of an abuse of drug. Mm -hmm. In fact, recently, a guy fell off a story building yeah. because he abused Drug. drugs and yeah. he died. So let's, let's look at how we can ma help our y children manage this pressure. Okay, um, I like to say that a lot of parents have failed their children. Mm. You know, they've not been available, they've not been accessible, mm. and they have allowed the situation, you know, the, the economic situation to take a hold on their attention. Now, when we talk about peer pressure, there is a certain age that a child, you know, falls under the intense of peer pressure and that's the teenage age which starts between the ages of nine a lot of people think it's from 13 no, no. Oh, really? it's no longer about the number it starts from nine because one of the things i tell parents is from nine you know your puberty has set in yeah. there is a consciousness of self and consciousness of the environment so don't wait till your child is 13. at 13 you are not you are just going to be doing fire brigade so from nine start getting deliberately involved with the uh, true identity of that child this is who you are you are not them all right then you have to affirm the child too because a child who is not affirmed who is not loved will think others who have it are having the love somewhere else so let me follow and navigate through to get the love they are getting now when it comes to peer pressure and children it's both ways male and female right but because of the gender that one is more intense than the yeah. other so i say that but today drug is a general pressure mm -hmm. you know the 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 the, the fantasy of living like every other child is a general pressure so one of the things you do for your child is bring it on the table these are the things that are happening so parents you need to be informed don't be out don't be out of the sphere of what is happening in the age bracket of your child whether as a child you know preteen or you know young adult get to know what is happening in fact get to know the slangs learn some of their ways and present it friendly mm -hmm. you know in a friendly manner and then also when it comes to prayer pressure you know i mentioned um identity it's a loss of identity for a child who you know, who, who, a, lot, a child with um, a zero identity will think, like I said, I can get it elsewhere, gadget and everything. Then don't, don't hide the truth from them. Let them know that, okay, if you give in to this, this is, these are the likely results. If it's drug, these are the likely results. If it is sex, these are the likely results. And parents need to come to terms with the reality that there are some things that are happening in your body's ch in your child's body the hormones which would make them want to go for it they want to go for it so it yeah, is not time having that conversation i yeah. wonder why <laughs> because they are not knowledgeable about it it is not time for you to fight that child it's the time for you to get knowledge and then train teach coach mentor influence the moon of that child within that period make that child understand that the reason you feel this pressure intensely is because of what is happening in you not what is happening uh -huh. outside of you why because we have children of your age 
who have parents who are deliberate about raising them and they are not under this type of pressure so it's about what is inside let's mm. deal with you okay then it will be easier for you to combat what's outside mm. basically mm. that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot so now with, with the recent developments that we are seeing where does this leave uh the family setting because a family is supposed to be uh, that aspect of society that mm. determines a lot. It helps you build your child to become whole. Mm. Mm. But then we are seeing so much happening in the society and we are wondering family values are getting lost. That system is seemingly disappearing. Mm. And one is wondering where are we actually headed? Mm. Scary thoughts. Mm. Yeah, but um, I think the awakening is part of why we're here. Right. And so the knowledge every day is what a lot of us need to get back out there. Sensitizing, teaching them, letting them know. I mean, my father back in the days would actually put us in the car and drive us around to the bad spots and the good spots and tell you, take your choices. If you do good, if you do this, this is where you end up. If you do this, this is where you end up. And obviously, we love the pretty environment of VI, Kui, and all the, you know, yeah. and this, the songs. And so it's about still consequences. Yeah. But also for some of us that don't have that norm, which is the father, the mother at home and all that, is still saying, okay, it doesn't matter. You can adopt. We used to write love letters to our seniors in school. Please be my school mother, be my school father. I don't think that is still in existence. Honestly, but you know what? <laughs> it did the work. It did the magic back in the days. Because then the seniors used to punish you if you had a good school mother. She fights yeah, for you. Yeah, she fights <laughs> for you, defend you. And really, it extends a real life. Mm. So in the neighborhood where you are, if you don't have... Um, a, a mother in the house or a father, you can choose a role model who yeah. is like a mentor, yeah. you know, who you see that maybe there's some things you admire. Take the good, delete the bad, mm -hmm. but all in all, adapt something to making sure that, you know what, no matter where I'm coming from, I want to be the best citizen of this great country. Yeah. All right, do you have... A Quickly, any final words? Very quickly because we run out of time. I say that parents need to wake up, okay, okay and then put the challenge on you first. Right. Because what you don't have, you cannot give. Absolutely. Mm. And that's a fine place to live it. Thank you so much, Princess Fola Shadik Bolaoba, uh, Global President, Yoruba Council of Women Worldwide, and founder, Shelter of Grace Foundation, as well as Cognitive Behavior Counselor, Wemimo Adebi. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming.